Possibly a week later, maybe a few days later, just depending on when you are revisiting your clay. The drying time of trimming a, a piece, a little more than leather hard. I wish you could feel the dryness of this because really that's what it boils down to. You want it to be so that you, you can't distort the, the rim when you pick it up. And I will actually try to come in and flip my pieces over so that the bases are exposed and the rim is um, you know, down against whatever the drawing board basically. Drawing time is something that you're going to have to work with because there's definitely an advantage to trimming at the perfect time. If it's too wet it's going to be kind of chewy and you're going to get stuck in your clay. If it's too dry it's just not going to be an enjoyable trim. So just just keep that in mind. There is is a perfect a perfect time. You can begin by sending it inside these concentric wheels that are already um, on most wheels. The next step is getting your wheel to go very quite slow. I'm going to hold my finger at a fixed point, very close to the piece, and at one point my thumb is going to touch. This is telling me that it's slightly off-centered. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stop at that point where it touches my thumb and push it ever so slightly away from me until it's centered. This can take longer than it took me. You don't want to start trimming it until it is centered. So take the time to center it before you start. You want to make sure that you're, you're doing that little centering right at the area that you will be trimming at. I'm going to place these little lugs down at the mouth of the cylinder. And I don't want to push into the cylinder. I just want to support it and make sure that it stays where it's, where it's at. There's a couple little different tools that I use. This is kind of the standard trimming tool. I enjoy bringing this in every now and then. I think about dancing around the foot, the bottom of the pot when I'm, when I'm trimming. So I don't, you don't want to stay in one place very long, okay? So first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take this tool and I'm only working from the center to three o'clock, always on the right side of the piece. And make sure that you're, you're holding it uh, kind of like you hold a, a pencil. Um, I'm going to counterbalance the form with my left, my left hand, one of my fingers from my left hand. It kind of moves around between these two fingers usually. I start in the center and make my way out to the right. So center to 3 o'clock, and I'm just making sure that the bottom is flat, which it is. Now I'm going to go over to the right side and put a, do a little shaping over here. And I don't want to go too far up the wall of this piece. I really tend to stick around the bottom third of the piece. Really keeping in mind the consistency of the wall thickness. So it's a cylinder. It's not the most interesting shape, but I know that the inner form is, you know, that 90 degree angle. So that's, I just want to express that on the outside as well as on the inside. Okay. So I kind of consider this area right here to be a danger zone because at that point when you're pushing at, at this point, um, I would say that's when you have the greater possibility to um, throw things off. So that's, that's the point when I'm counterbalancing the most. Okay, now that I've established that outer edge over here, I'm going to make a mark where I want my foot to be. And it's a little thicker than it might be um, at the end. And now I'm going to extract clay from the center. And I'm going to use this 
triangular edge of this tool and I'm actually going to hold my tool differently at this point. So starting in the center with the wheel going fast but not full speed, whatever's comfortable and just kind of extracting the clay, making a little rut ridges and now I'm going to take those ridges away and I can come back in and establish that edge a little, a little more. There we go. Again, coming back in with that angle and coming back in with the flat side. Okay, another way to do this would be just to put the pressure on the right side of the tool and coming back in and flattening that out. So my suggestion is to go faster than slower. It's actually to your, to your advantage to go faster when you're trimming. The clay tends to move you when you're going slow opposed to you moving the clay. So just, just keep that in mind. I like to use this angular tool on the inside foot so that when I get over to this edge, I'm able to get up into that corner and, and, and stop. Um, if I was using the, the other side, it would be more of a curve that I was um, putting into the form. And I just, I really want a little angle here. Your foot is really dependent on the form and everybody's foot is different. So that's, that's gonna be up to you. What I'm thinking about right now is following the inner form of this piece. And I know that it's a 90 degree angle where the base meets the wall. Um, so I'm just trying to match that on the outside. I'm trying to sort of mimic that same shape. So again, consistent wall thickness. Now I'm going to move over to this, this outer foot area here. And I can come in from the side maybe. I can take this area down a little bit. And this is where I, I begin my, my dance around the foot of the, of the piece, just bringing it together like a composition, not spending too long in one area. So this is all sort of a personal, a personal preference, a, your own personal little choreography going on with the base of this piece. And now you're, I'm just dancing around all the different areas that I've already touched upon, just trying to get it, just putting on the finishing touches. Really um, being conscious of what the form needs and directing the tool in those areas so that I can sort of uh, expose that, that shape of the clay. Clean your, clean your tools if they get clogged. I like to put a little angle on my edge right there so that the form doesn't appear to be growing out of the table. Uh, it just gives it a little lift. So really use your trimming tool and use these angles to, to come in and curve. And you can even push out with this tool, push down from the top. And there's even a little room for a little decorative finish on the bottom. I put pressure on the right side of my tool and I just move quickly and make a little swirl inwards. Uh, I can smooth this out. 
I offer a little compression to the base and everywhere I trimmed because sometimes this trimming process can uh, expose the grog in the clay. So just going over and smoothing out those surfaces. All right, and that's the foot. Okay, so we've successfully centered, thrown, and trimmed the cylinder. Now I'm providing you here with a cross-section of the cylinder. As you can see, um, consistent wall thickness, except when you get to this point here. It's a little on the thin side, and that's caused um, by coming in a little too narrow, not really being true to the form. So before you put your piece down on the wheel to be trimmed, check the interior of the form and respond to that in your trimming.